Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. We give you praise, O oh God, for this privilege. We thank you for your hand that has gathered us from all the different parts. Thank you, O oh God, for your mighty hand that has been stretched towards us. This moment, Lord, we ask that you take all the glory, you take all the honor, you take all adoration, for we have seen you doing a new thing in our midst. And for this, we say to you, thank you. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the way you have gathered your young people all over the nations, and even those that we cannot flash, those that are in the Bahamas, those that are in Belize and in the Caribbeans. Lord, all the different parts where you have gathered your sons and daughters, because something is about to happen. Something new is about to take place. Something eternal is about to break forth. And so, Lord, we stand before you with fear and trembling, knowing that we have entered into a new season, and we hear you speaking very clearly. Be strong and do it. Lord, we ask that your hand will be stretched again upon each individual that are sitting in this meeting. Thank you for campuses that have set aside this time. And I said, we want the presence of God on our campus. We ask, Lord, that your hand will bring this about. Let your spirit come down upon us. Let no one attending student congress and youth congress this year go out without a divine touch. All those, oh God, at our various levels, at our various points of need, you reach out to us. Call us by name. This meeting is a meeting where you'll be calling people by their names. So, Lord, I ask that you call us by name. Speak to us as one who knows us from inside, that we might take our space in your divine agenda. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Our theme have been said as be strong and do it. A charge to the replacement sons and daughters. We sense that this meeting itself is going to be a charge to several of you. It's something God is going to place in your hand and you are the one to rise up and do what God is saying to you. Our team text, which I'll be speaking into later on, is taken from First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9 and 10 in the first instance, and Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. What is the body behind this meeting? And what is God wanting to accomplish when he gathered us together in this manner? Now, as for you, my son, know the God of your father, and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And then when you turn to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, say, You therefore, my son, 
be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Now these passages, we are going to be studying them each time we come for the team talk, as the Lord will permit us, because there is something God is saying. But now I want you to, let's go through what is the body that God has dropped for this year's Seiko. I'll go through it, like I said, before I bring you a charge. We have come to this point, even as we see God bringing to us the promise of open heavens where we shall see the heavens open unto us and we shall see the traffic of God's messengers ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. We shall see deliberate ascending of our petition to heaven and a release and an outpouring of the showers of blessing from above. I want you to mark this. We shall see deliberate ascending of our petition to heaven and a release and an outpouring or what you call a descending of the showers of blessing from above. And this we will see it upon the Lord Jesus a ladder to the glory beyond what the earth can contain. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered the heart of anyone, what God has kept in store for those who love him, and what he has decided to do beyond this present time in which we have served him. We sense that we are entering to something, and when God is speaking and directly charging those of you that are younger, those of you that God is raising and God is speaking very critically about you, we say that something is about to break forth. And we give God praise that we have the privilege of seeing that take off. But we are trusting that what God is going to do with your lives henceforth shall baffle your colleagues. It shall be a surprise to people around you. And the glory of God that will break forth upon your life will be unprecedented in the name of Jesus. In God's determinate counsel, His work must pass from one generation to another, and this is why He has led His servants from one age to another to engage in concerted discipleship, to raise the young who will bear the baton of leadership and of his work in the days ahead. We have no doubt in our hearts that the time of passing on the baton has come. Please mark that in your mind. There's no doubt in our heart at all that the time of passing on the baton has come. The time to begin to release what we carried for years, to lay it on your lives, Trusting that you will be strong, you will run with it, and you will do what God is setting you apart to do, even in your own generation. When Elijah thought he was the only one left, and Jezebel was seeking to kill him, God pointed that he has reserved for himself 7,000 that have not bowed their knees to bar or kiss the strange gods. How did he keep them? And Elijah did not know they existed. This is the matter God is raising with us in this student and youth congress. You have been reserved and you have been kept by the mercy of God for a clear assignment. 
God, as he amat, and pointed at you as his appointed channel for his fulfillment. So I want to quickly say that every one of you sitting in this meeting this year, and it was very, very touching to me that unlike all other years, God has gone ahead of us. And I sense that what God is doing is that he has brought you in because there is something in heaven as he has marked and pointed at you as his appointed channel for its fulfillment. My prayer as we start this meeting is that each one of you sitting under this meeting, going through it either from the Bible studies, through the workshops, the pathfinders and all that will come in this meeting, God will set you ablaze. The hand of God will come upon you. You are not going to remain the same again. You are going to begin to enter into the destiny that God has set for your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking forward to an outburst, a breaking forth upon your lives as individuals. And as we see you rising, we can see an, a mighty army, a, a contingent of God's army, moving, passing from nation to nation, from land to land, establishing the kingdom of God. We see you rising into different spaces, professional spaces. We see some of you taking hold of the gates in scientific researches and bringing a change, a turnaround for the kingdom of our God. David had intention to build the temple. He prepared all the materials. He got the design concept even from the Spirit of God. But God told him it was not him heaven has appointed. Though a man after God's own heart, it was not for him to build but to prepare a son who will take over the baton and run with the vision. This is a very, very critical issue. I hope in the course of this meeting, God will give me liberty and utterance to speak to you about where we now are in the purpose and in the program of God, not only for our nation, but for the nations of the earth. I'm trusting that at certain point, God will give us the liberty to begin to take you on board in sharing with you what is it that God has spoken and what is the plan, what is the pattern, what is the direction that the Lord wants to cause his move to go and for which you have been appointed, you have been highlighted by God and heaven is saying, I'm focusing on this young man to carry out my assignment. Paul labored so much with all the energy that God so graciously and generously gave him. At the end of his labor, he knew he had to pass the baton to Timothy. Elijah did not realize this on time, but for his work not to perish at his departure, he had to look for Elisha to anoint in his room. We sense also that God is preparing you for a crucial assignment in the kingdom of God. In the days ahead, and your role in the coming move of God is not in doubt at all. We are very sure about that, and our heart is very warm towards it, and we know that this is something that we need to begin to do. I was declaring with a resource person that I perceive that this year's Student Congress is the beginning of a new phase. This year's Student Congress is a beginning of something new that God is going to bring, a new dimension. There's going to be a release of several young lives with the batting. They will go forth and begin to do exploits and we are going to see you break forth, we are going to see you take off when we are still able to provide spiritual oversight. And in this Congress, 
God has released very definite instructions and clear pointers to what you are being prepared to do and for you to be so mobilized into it. As the word of the Lord for this Congress is clearly outlined for us in those two thematic passages. That will be the thematic instructions that will be going through as the Lord will permit us from one space to another. As for you, my son, as for you, my daughter, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. There are crucial instructions for the journey ahead of you, and it is crucial that you bear the right trumpet to blow, even as the heavens open over your head in this day of His power. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the body for this year's Congress. I always want to share that body before we start the meeting so that you know that there's something we are pursuing. You know that something God has spoken, that we are not just gathering a meeting just to speak anyhow. We are following a divine mandate. We are following an instruction. And I'm praying that God will help you. We are at the threshold of an unstoppable move and the vanguard of it are the young people who will be on stage even while the fathers are still around to provide spiritual oversight. There's something peculiar about this move. It is that God is intending that this move will break forth and several of you will be running with it. While we are still alive to provide spiritual oversight, to guide you, and to make sure that the pattern of his will for your life does not become obscured uh, from your eyes. If the Lord has been urging and nudging your heart about a significant and a definite working in your life, and you are growing with a sense of destiny in the purpose of God, I want you to report yourself. I want you to settle down with all your heart in this Congress. I want you to forget everybody around you. I want you to know that God is waiting to engage you. God is ready to equip you. And God is going to commission you. This is my prayer. This is our expectation. May the Lord help each one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. What is my charge to you? And it is a very short word that I found again and again in the passage that we read. And if you ask me, what do I want to focus on? As for you, my son and my daughter. As for you, my son and my daughter. You know, when you come to understand that there's a divine focus on your life. So when you say, what do I say about this church? As for you, my son, my daughter, a divine focus on you. A spotlight of heaven is coming on you. So the first thing I want to do tonight as I deal with this little phrase in our discussion is for you to recognize that even though you may be many in the center where you are sitting, or you may be few, some centers they are running into thousands, and yet some centers they are about 20, 25, 30, and yet there are some of you that because of where you are located, you are just a few, and yet you know God is keeping his eyes running to and fro and is looking and focusing on you as an individual. So when the scripture begins and say, as for you, my son Solomon, I thought it was only in the story of David handing over that you will see that kind of thing. But as you come to the book of Timothy, 
you will see that several times in the book of Timothy, both 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, you keep hearing again and again. He said, as for you, as for you, my son Timothy, as for you, it's as if others may do anything they like, others may go anywhere they like to go, but as for you, as for you, every time you see that scripture coming back, as for you, as for you, as for you, as for you, oh my son, as for you, oh my daughter, you may not know what is happening to the second person by your side or the person at your back. That's not my concern. As for you, as for you, O Solomon, as for you, O Timothy, as for you, O Deborah, as for you, O Esther, as for you, as for you, just put your name there. God is speaking to you, speaking about you, and focusing on you, a divine focus on your life, a divine focus on your destiny, a divine focus on what heaven is about to do with your life. As for you, as for you, my son. Now, so I want you to please go with me now to the first Chronicles and chapter 28. I'll just be dealing with that as for you. I won't say more than that here today because I sense that that's where the Lord will want me to just do and welcome you as for you. What is happening to you? How things are with you? Heaven is speaking about you. Say, so as for you, Claudius, as for you, Charles, as for you, James, as for you, Ronke, as for you, success. God is deliberately speaking about you. So if you will have your note, I want you to write in on your note the theme for this reading. As for you, oh Samuel, as for you, oh Kule, as for you. Oh, Timothy, put your name there. Heaven is speaking directly about you. And God is addressing you because there is something at stake about your life. You are a girl, you are a young lady, and you are thinking, am I involved? If you listen carefully tonight, you'll be hearing God mentioning your name. And there may be some that are saying, but I'm still a young boy, I'm still a young boy. That was how Jeremiah was thinking he was a young boy. When God came to him and said, Jeremiah, when you were still in your mother's womb, I have known you. Even before you were born, I've ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Don't let me hear you say, but I am but a youth. God is touching and focusing on your life. So let's quickly look at that. First Chronicles chapter 28. As for you, my son Solomon, I'm reading verse 9 and verse 10 particularly. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart. And with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Now, what is God speaking when he says, As for you, as for you, as for you, my son, as for you, my daughter, 
And you know, I just felt God is speaking from the depth of his heart. God is opening his mind concerning you and is speaking very particularly to you as an individual. And what are the issues that I see God deliberately raising particularly for you as we start this meeting? As for you, that's the first matter. As for you, forget everyone else. Stop thinking about your friends, your colleagues. Stop worrying yourself about those who are not here. And don't be concerned, don't be consumed with those who are even here. Even though you have come and we are going to sing together, we are going to eat together, by the grace of God we are going to study together, we are going to be discussing together, we are going to enjoy fellowship together. Yet, there is a matter, a word, as for you, oh my son, and for you not to be wondering, who are they talking to? They said, my son, Solomon. As for you, my son, Samuel. As for you, my son, Titi, my daughter, Titi. <laughs> as for you, as for you, Lungile. As for you, as for you, my son. So that's the first word I want you to look at. As for you. For you as an individual, as for you a person, as for you, as for you. So that's the first matter that God in his determinate cancer is thinking and speaking as for you. You, you as an individual person, you as that young lady, you as that young brother, you as that young man, you as that student on the campus, you as that young brother, you as the first son in your father's house, or you may even be the last born, like David was the last born in his father Jesus' house. And yet when God came, it was for David, the prophet Samuel came to anoint as for you. So the first word there is a separation for attention. Whenever you see the word say, as for you, I seem to say, whatever I've said about all others, whatever is happening with all others, as for you, you are special, you are peculiar, I am focusing on you particularly, I am particular about you. God is particular about you. God is speaking to you as an individual. God is speaking to you as if there is no one else. As for you, as for you, you may say, ah, but I'm the last born in my father's house. That is true. David was the last born. You may say, but my mother is not the first wife in my father's marriage, and even my mother Yes, Solomon was the son of a bad saber. And if you remember all that has happened, people are saying, why should they talk about Solomon, the son of a concubine? But that's not what we are talking about. How you are born, where you are born, who born you, the circumstances of your birth, whether your mother is alive, whether you are born even on the roadside, whatever it is. That's not the issue. God is focusing on you. He said, as for you, as for you. So that's the first thing I want you to note. That as far as God is concerned, he is addressing you as a person. He's addressing you as an individual. He's focusing on you. He's speaking into your destiny. He's speaking into your future. He's speaking into your personal experience. As for you, as for you, oh my daughter, as for you, oh my son, as for you, oh my son Solomon, as for you, my daughter, my son Timothy, as for you. 
So if God has settled down focusing on you, what are the issues that is coming out here? I'm just doing an outline. We are not going to go deep into them because I just look forward to starting you off so that we can pray together. Know the God of your father. Know the God of your father. There's something God wants you to touch. It's like whatever you have known, whatever has happened in your family, whatever has happened to your senior brother or senior sister or junior ones, that's not the issue. You get to know the God of your father. Get to know the God, the God that will become your God in life. You cannot be in the general company. God is demanding that you as an individual, you will enter into a personal experience, a personal relationship, and a personal encounter with God that will make God to be your God. You will not be strong to do anything if you are not personal with God. You will not be strong to strike your generation. You won't be able to fulfill the destiny that God has set for your life if you are not personal in your personal knowledge of God. Are you sitting in a church meeting and your own center is the church youth group or whichever way God has arranged and you are sitting here. And God is saying, you, as for you, as for you, oh, you got it. Know the God of your father. Stop moving about. Stop chasing ordinary shadows. What God wants to do with your life requires that you become personal. Become Passionate. What God wants to do with your life demands that you will wake up now and know that I'm not just a man in the crowd. God is focusing on you and is calling you by your name. Know the God of your father. Stop playing pranks. Stop playing religion. So just be a general member. Don't just say I'm in us in the fellowship. You are being called aside and called apart to perform a role for which you have been chosen. There's something God is choosing you to carry out in your lifetime. And as young as you may be thinking, you are the one that heaven is setting aside for that assignment. And so in response, as for you, my son, know the God of your father. And serve him. And serve him. But now I want you to look at the various issues that were raised in this Bible verse. Serve him with a lawyer heart. With a lawyer heart and with a willing mind. Can I ask you, what's the meaning of a lawyer heart? This is a heart that is lawyer. This is a heart that is focused. This is a heart that is committed. This is a heart that is not here and there. This is a heart that is not pretending. This is a heart that, whether in the secret or in the public, is a heart that is committed, is loyal to God. You remember that when God wanted to select and set apart David from among his own senior brothers, there were eight sons in that family. And David was the last one. And a time came like this. And I want to tell you, it is also like this. A change of pattern is about to take place. A vacancy has arisen. And God is looking for a replacement son. 
God is looking for people that will take over. God is sending his servant and say, I have reserved for myself among the sons of this a king among them. And when he got there, everybody gathered. And all the senior brothers were presented. They even forgot David. But on that particular day, God was speaking to Samuel. Look not at the height of their stature. Look not at the countenance. Look not at their appearance. For I, God, I don't look at such things. I look at the heart. I look at the heart. Let me ask you, is your heart loyal? As you are sitting in this meeting, where is your heart? Are you a pretender? Even though you claim to follow, to come for fellowship and all of that, is your heart loyal? Aren't you doing some other things in the secret? Aren't you in between opinions? Is your heart loyal? I want to ask you, I'm not asking about your face. I'm not asking about how you are dressed. Some of you are dressed so well you are conformed. When we come to a fellow that say these are one of those good sisters, this is one of those good brothers and all of that. But that's not what we are dealing with this moment. Is your heart loyal? Is your heart right with God? Is your heart focused? Is your heart in what God is saying? Are you smiling on the surface where your heart has departed? Jesus Christ said, these people, they honor me with their mouth. They sing my praise on their lips, but their hearts have departed from me. That's what we are talking about now. So, if you are going to respond to God, the first thing is to ask, where is my heart? Is my heart right with God? Is my heart what God can use? Is my heart in one space or I'm in and out? Is your heart loyal? So serve him with a loyal heart. I will be speaking about that because since the heart is crucial, the Lord may be opening his word to us in all this. But first and foremost, as for you, my son, as for you, my daughter, as for you, 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 as you are sitting here, is your heart loyal? Are you behaving as if you belong, but you did not belong? Are you pretending as if all is well with you when your heart has departed? Hey, young man, are you in this congress today with a loyal heart? Or you just came to pretend and confuse one other girl as if you are part of the whole thing so you can capture and confuse her? Is your heart loyal? Are you truly a child of God? Then he said with a willing mind. With a willing mind. Is your mind completely, completely subdued? Are you excitedly wanting to love God with all your heart, with a willing mind? Why? Why is this matter needed? Say, so for the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts for the Lord searches all hearts first Samuel chapter 16 and in verse 6 and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and he said surely the Lord anointed it both before him but the Lord said unto Samuel Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 
Then he just said, call Abinadab. I made him pass before Samuel, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Then he just said, made Shammah to pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of the sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. What is the reason? Why has God not chosen these ones? The question is their heart. What has God checked? He said, God has looked on their heart. And he did not find their heart loyal. He did not find their mind willing. He did not find them correct. And in this meeting, don't think God is just looking at your face. God is searching your heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Look at what the Bible says again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10 now say, I the Lord. Search the heart. I try the race, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. I, the Lord, I search the heart. For the Lord searches all hearts. Now, so, friends, there's a searchlight going on. No face on your face, on your heart. Is your heart lawyer? Are you a slave in the heart? Are you a captive of certain sins and certain wrong attitude, wrong addictions? Are you a quiet womanizer? But you are smiling on the face as if you are not injurious. Is your heart right with God? Oh, for the Lord searches all hearts. So you can sit down there and say, I don't know whether God knows my heart. He can see it. He's searching your heart. But you see, why is God addressing you? It's because God has an assignment for your life. But this kind of heart that is not lawyer, this kind of heart that is in between opinion, this kind of heart that is shifting around, this kind of heart that is addicted to sin, addicted to the things of the world, addicted to the things that are contrary to the will of God, this kind of heart. So when these brothers brought this kind of heart, though they were well dressed, though they appear sanctified on the surface, and their appearance, their countenance look impressive, so that even somewhere almost poured the anointing upon Elia. Before God shouted and said, no, 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 don't make that mistake. I have seen his heart. His countenance is good, but his heart is wrong. His appearance looks impressive, but his heart is defamed and deflated. I can't use this kind of man. Don't pour my anointing upon him. The Lord has not chosen this. And so they brought all this and God was searching their hearts. Mm -mm, mm -mm, their heart is not right. Their heart is not right. Their heart is not right. Even though we need men and women to run from what God is about to talking about, God needs men and women with lawyer hearts. Hearts that have been, you know, delivered. Hearts that have been sanctified. Hearts that have been set free from the power of sin. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands, God understands all the intents of the thoughts. There are things going on in your mind, in your heart. There are intentions of your thought that you have not even spoken to anybody. There are issues going on in your heart that you thought nobody knew. Your parents don't know what is going on. On your surface, they say, oh, we have a good daughter there. But something has affected and perforated your heart. You may appear like a young student. And they say, no, this is a young man. He cannot be doing like that. But God sees the intent of the thought of your heart. He said, if you seek him. Because God understands all the intents of the thoughts that goes on in your mind. Whereas others may be waiting for you to tell them fantastic lies. 
God knows what is in your thought. Even when you are not spoken, He saw it. Even when you are just contemplating, He sees it. And so as God is focusing on you and saying, As for you, O oh my son, as for you, O oh my daughter, let's begin where God is beginning. Let's begin with your heart. Let's begin with the intent of your thoughts. Let's check. Is your thoughts congruent with the will of God? Is your heart not wandering here and there? If you seek him, he will be found by you. If you say, Lord, now that you are speaking about me, now that you are focusing on me, now that you are calling me by my name, eh, one of you, God is calling you by your name, you are a twin. And you are Kende and you are Taye. But God is saying, as for you, Taye, he said, but why is God not talking to Kende? Leave Kende alone. God is talking about you today. God is demanding and focusing on your own life today. Today. As for you, as for you, Taye, as for you, Jacob, as for you, you can imagine that you can come from one womb like Jesus had eight sons. But God was checking each of their hearts. As I draw this to a place where we can pray together, so if you will seek Him, He will be found by you. If you will seek the Lord in this meeting, God will make Himself available to you. But if you forsake Him, and I don't want to read that because I believe you will not, but if you forsake Him, if you should turn your back and say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. If you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. And how terrible it is for God to cast a man off from his presence. There was a young man like that that God cast out of his presence. It was Cain. Cain. God came to speak to Cain several times. And let me conclude by asking you to look at all the help that God was giving Cain and he failed to recognize it. You see, when God is talking to you, I say, as for you, as for you, as for you, all the effort, <coughs> including this student congress, this student congress was brought so close to you so that you don't have any excuse why you couldn't travel. You will say, oh, it's because I cannot travel. God brought it so close to you. Some of you, you just step out of your room and you are already in the chapel or in the venue where the student congress is running. Some of you, by the grace of God, people were willing to transport you to the place. Some of you, God allowed it to now happen in your own local church. No excuse why you will not respond to what God is saying to you. Now, turn with me to Genesis chapter 4 and see why Cain finally lost out. Why Cain did not become what he was meant to be. Cain was the firstborn son of Adam. And he would have carried all that God wanted Adam to become in life. And Cain would have been one of the head of all the families of the earth. But what is it that happened to Cain? And I wanted to see very quickly. I don't want to start talking about how their offering was rejected. That was not what is actually the matter. But let's read. I read from verse 1 so quickly. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, you see, you can see that Cain had a good name. What was his name? I have gotten a man from the Lord. There was a great expectation about his life. His mother was looking for say, oh, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I've gotten someone that will give definition to my life. Cain was a good name. 
good intention about his life. And he was supposed to be the man from the Lord. This was how Cain was named. A man got him from the Lord. I wondered and said, oh my God. But as I've been traveling up and down now, Cain has spoiled that name. That nobody will readily name his son Cain. Mm. But yet, Cain was a good name. I have gotten a man from the Lord. I've gotten a leader. I've gotten someone that will represent the Lord in our generation in my life. And in the process of time, verse 3, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And neither he also of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. I want you to mark this now. It is not the offering that God did not first have respect to. It is the person that is offering the offering. It is the person that either God can accept or reject. Before God can think about your skill, can talk about your offering, can talk about your sacrifice, or talk about your capacities. It is you. That's why the first matter we are dealing with is that you will know the God of your Father. You will serve Him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. Now look at Cain. And so, God did not have respect to Cain and to his offering. Now, he said to Cain to say, Oh God, what have I done? What is wrong with my life that you don't have respect to me? You are not, you don't regard me. You are not looking at my sight. Lord, what have I done? Look at the Bible in verse 5. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain was very angry. I was wondering, with who was he angry? He was angry with God? Rather than say, oh God, what is wrong with me? He was not looking at himself. He was rather going to blame God. He said, God, why did you not accept me? Why did you accept my junior brother? And Cain was very rough, and his countenance <clears throat> fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you wrath? Why are you angry? Why are you furious? And why is your countenance falling? Did you see God? God wanted something out of Cain. God wanted to use Cain. Cain was a man gotten from the Lord. But look at what is happening to this young man now. There are some of you, when you were born, there was a great promise hanging on your life that this is a child that is coming from above, from the Lord. But what are you becoming, my friend? What are you becoming, my brother? What is happening to you? And the Bible said, God was going on to talk to him, said, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin, sin lies at the door, and unto you shall be his desire, and thou shalt do what? Rule over him. In the New King James, God was saying to him, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, Will you not be accepted? This is God saying, there's no problem. If you do well, you'll be accepted. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. Sin is crouching at your door. And his desire is for you. Sin wants to kill you. Sin is looking for you. Sin is organizing how to trap you and how to finish you, how to make you a non-entity, how to make you a shadow of what you are born to be. My friend, 
sin is crouching around you. As a young girl, a young sister, God has a great plan for your life. But look at sin crouching around you. Look at those wrong boys, you call them boyfriend, girlfriend, that you are doing. They are about to finish your life. They are about to bring you into something that will be irreversible. And God was saying to Cain, Sin is lying at your door. And his desire is for you, but you should overrule it. You should rule over, you must overcome it. Don't allow sin to overcome you again. Don't leave this meeting still under the deception of sin. You must overrule it. You must rule over it. Did he respond? And Cain talked with Abel. God told him what to do. You must overcome this thing. Don't let sin rule over you. Instead of him to fall down on his knees and say, Oh God, please help me. Please help me. You know what he went to do now? He went and talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. As if he say, if God will not accept me, then you cannot be alive. If I'm not in the good book of God, I don't see how you can become anything. Now, how does killing another brother make you become anything? How does cutting short another person help you to fulfill your destiny? All this struggle you are having, instead of you facing God and saying, God, it is me that needed help. It is me that need to be touched. It is me that you need to affect. It is me that you need to change in this meeting. Why are you looking left and right? Why are you bothered about someone else? God is saying, as for you, my son. As for you, my daughter. Cain missed it finally. God again came to ask Cain. Look at God. Pursuing Cain because God actually wants something out of Cain. And God came to him in verse 9. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? I see God is saying, Cain, what have you done? He said, I do not know. I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? You can see a heart that is already hardened. You can see a heart that God is looking for help. The Holy Spirit is pushing you. God has brought you again. To avert you so that you don't get wasted. God has brought you so he can help your life so that Satan don't have the upper hand over your life and destroy what you are born to be. There's something you are born to be, my brother. There's something you are born to be, my dear sister. There's something you are born to be, my son, my daughter. There's something heaven is planning for you. You don't have to squander it. You don't have to waste it. You don't have to fall out. But for Cain, oh my God. He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? He's talking to God as if he's talking to a colleague. And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now, and now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And look at the Bible. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield the strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Wow. A man from the Lord is going to become a fugitive, a vagabond. Even when that was pronounced over him, I again didn't see him kneeling down and saying, God have mercy on me. Did you see what he said? He said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. I said, you are punishing me too much. And there are some of you sitting there, the Spirit of God has been knocking on your life, calling you up and down, and something is just standing you so strong. You are always looking for excuses. Don't let that happen to you. As I draw this to a point of prayer, 
And I'll be asking you to join me in prayer today. God is saying, as for you, my son. We may not be talking about everybody, but as for you, my daughter. If others can do anything they are doing, for you is different. Others may go anywhere they like to go, and you are seeing them, and you think, ah, let me follow them. No, 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 no. As for you, my son. As for you, my daughter, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches our hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be fond of you. If you call on him just now and say, Lord, so this is your plan for my life, he has been waiting. It doesn't matter how many times you are falling. God has not taken away his eyes from you. God is still focusing on you. He is still willing to receive you. He's willing to forgive you. He's willing to cleanse you. He's willing to deliver you. He's willing to restore you. Whatever was wrong before, God is saying, as for you, my son, as for you, my daughter, I have not yet finished what I'm doing with your life. But you need to seek God with all your heart. You need to serve him with a loyal heart, with a willing mind. And if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, and I don't pray you will do so, if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. And you become a fugitive, a vagabond, all that ever meant for your life will then become cancelled and suspended. But the Holy Spirit has brought you now, and because God, in His mercy, is saying, As for you, my son and my daughter, would you like to let me stop at this point as I pray with you? This is the beginning of this meeting, but God has come to address you as a person. Whatever else we will be saying, He will be saying it to you as a person. Whatever God will be demanding, it will be a charge to you as God's replacement son and daughter. All the issues, all the instructions that will be coming from now on will be addressed to you as someone who has a future to fulfill for God. That future, you may not be able to explain it now, it may not be on the pulpit, it may be in different aspects, but heaven is saying, as for you, my son, God has chosen you. God has set his eyes upon you. God has set you aside and apart for a divine assignment. But something has to happen to your own heart this moment. May the Lord open your understanding as we pray together. Can I request you to please rise in prayer as I commend you to God. And I want you to say, as for me, you also, I think you will be able to say like that. God says, as for you, can you now say, as for me, and put your name there. I will not be disobedient to the heavenly vision. As for me, others may go anywhere, I will follow the Lord. As for me, others may be playing pranks. Lord, I want my life to please you. I want you to take my life as for me. Since God said, as for you, O oh my son Timothy, as for you, O oh my son Solomon, as for you, O oh my daughter Deborah, as for you, O oh my child, O oh my daughter, O oh my daughter Atinuke, whatever is your name that God has called, can you also write and say, Lord, as for me, as for me, I will not be rebellious. As for me, I will not go away. I know Satan is putting all kind of traps on my path. I know sin is crouching at my door. I know I've seen all kind of temptation that say, you want to pull me away, pull me away. But here, oh God, as I've heard you speak concerning my life, as for me, Lord, I'm coming to you. Lord, I'm coming. I will not be a waste. Your destiny for my life will not be a waste. I will not end a fugitive. I will not be a vagabond. I will fulfill the reason 
why you have called me, why you have set me aside, why you have given me life. Can I hear you pray to God? Can I hear you say, as for me, as for me, oh God, no matter what others are saying, as for me, Lord, I will serve you. As for me, Lord, I want you to take my heart. I want you to take my heart and help me. I want you to change my story. Whatever others are doing, whatever is happening to others, oh God, as for me, as for me, I have decided to follow Jesus. Thank you. Lord, as we are praying, and as we are taking our stand, say, as for me, Lord, I also want to declare, as for me, oh God, I have decided not to look back. I have decided not to look left or right. I have decided to pursue what you are saying concerning my life. Lord, as for me, my life is not going to be a waste. And I'm not going to be one of those that have been derailed and could not fulfill the reason. They said, we have received a man from the Lord. And how did he now become a fugitive? Lord, help me. Ask for me. Now, while we are praying, the Holy Spirit may be charging you and showing you what sin is crouching at your door. God may be showing you what is making your heart disloyal. God may be pointing at a man and say, but you have a relationship that is contrary to my will in your life. You have an habit, an addiction that the devil is putting so that you will not be able to fulfill your destiny. But God is saying, you seek me, you will find me. If you call upon me, I will be found of you. I will help you. If the Holy Spirit just said to you, as for you, my daughter, you can't go that way because my plan for you is different. You will not become a fugitive because my plan for you is good. My thoughts towards you are for good and not for evil. God is speaking, as for you, as for you. Who is that saying, Lord, as for me also? I refuse to go with the devil. I refuse to hide. I refuse for my heart to be disloyal. I'm coming to you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I'm hearing your voice. You say, if I seek you, I will find you. I have struggled here and there. I have been falling and rising. And you look as if Satan is targeting on me to make me a useless non-entity. But as for me, I've heard your voice. I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm coming to you, can help me. I'm coming to you, can save me. I'm coming to you, can forgive me. I'm coming to you, can cleanse me. I want my life to become what you want it to be. I will not go away from here, striving with you again. I will not go out of this meeting, going again with a heart that is disloyal. I'm not going to go, oh God, with a heart that is deceitful, and yet people think I'm all right. Help me. As for me, I don't know what others are saying about for themselves, but as for me, I will hand over my life to you. Wherever you are, raise that right hand to go and say, Lord, as for me, as for me, as for me, I don't know for that girl, but for me, I'm going, I'm going to follow the Lord now. I'm going to seek the God of my Father. I'm going to seek Him who went to the cross to deliver me and to give me a space in His presence. Oh, as for me, I'm coming. Thank you. With your right hand lifted above, you put your second hand on your chest and say, Lord, as for me. As for me, oh God, I have decided to walk with you. You will forgive me. You will take away from me anything that will be a hindrance to your purpose in my life. As for me, Lord, as for me, Lord, I don't know what others are thinking about themselves. I don't know how others are thinking about themselves, but as for me, Lord, <clears throat> thank you. Can you now step out? If you are already on your knees, come out. If you are standing wherever you are, please step out towards the altar. Oh, I will pray with you. Uh, God is saying, oh, as for you, as for you. As for you, I see so many people in your family. I see so many people in your campus. I see so many people in your courts. But I have set you apart. My eyes are on you. As for you, oh, my son. As for you, oh, my daughter. 
God bless you. Where are you? And you walk out and say, as for me. God says, as for you, you are also saying, Lord, as for me. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. As you are stepping out, just walk out before the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. And as you are coming, just kneel down and say, Lord, as for me. As for me. My life is not going to be a waste. As for me, others may go anywhere, but for me, I'm hearing you. Thank you. God bless you. Those young men, those young ladies, even those young students that the Holy Spirit is calling you, just step out. But I want you to do so with yourself on your knees and say, Lord, as for me, as for me, as for me, oh God, as for me. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I just sense that the Lord is giving space tonight. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, young lady. Just walk out. Just walk out. When we say, as for you, God is saying, you are also saying, as for me, as for me, as for me, as for me. Pornography is finishing, as for me. I'm not going with that anymore. As for me, oh God, oh God, my heart must be circumcised. I have seen a reason now why I cannot go on that way. God bless you. God bless you. Where are you? Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, dear brother. Just come, come, come out. If you have lifted out her hand and you are determined and say, as for me, as for me, whatever the devil is saying, as for me, I'm going to my God. I'm going to serve him. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Wherever you are from, thank you, my friend. My friend, God bless you. God has located you in Belgium, and he said, as for you. As for you. Whatever has happened, heaven is saying, as for you. God bless you, friends. On your campus, God is saying, as for you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please come, come on, come on before I pray. As for you, oh my son Solomon. As for you, oh my daughter Rachel. Kara Baba Samba Robo Shinda Bakara. Rika Baba 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 Sando Robo Shinda Karuba Saila. Lo Bakanta Yeke Robo Skamba Kori Mo Shinda Bakara Masai. Oh God, oh God, I can see you walking into our midst, walking all over the world, calling those that you are set apart, calling those that you are chosen in mercy, calling those, oh God, who are going to stand up to become your voice in their generation. I see you walking from one center to another, from one house to another, from one place to another, even there are some, oh God, who could not come to a center, but they are sitting in their sitting room and say, I must go with this. And God says, as for you, 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 rise where you are, get on your knees and say, as for me, oh God, I'm not going to end it vagabond. I'm going to fulfill the reason why you have set me aside. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all these lives that it pleased you to go again. Say, as for you, my son. As for you, my son. You are the center of my focus now. You are at the center of my focus now, my son. My son, bring me your heart. It doesn't matter how many things went wrong with you, just come. Just come. A new heart will I give you. A new spirit I put within you. Even though Cain made mistake, God was still looking for him. God was still meeting him. God was still speaking to him. God was still saying, if you do well, you'll be accepted. God was counseling him. If you do well, 
If you do well, what you have done before is not a problem. I will forgive you. Oh, but instead of responding, you rather went back. Oh, are you responding to God? The Holy Spirit saying, yes. There's someone sitting there you have aborted. But God is speaking to you. He said, yes. You have aborted, but if you will turn to the Lord, I'm willing to forgive you and start afresh with you. I'm willing to begin a new way with you. Don't sit back there. Stand up and say, for me, I'm going to the Lord. I'm going to make my life right. You may have even come in with a boyfriend. And the boy say, are you going to go? Say, yes, as for me, I'm hearing God calling me tonight. It's enough. I can't go back the way we came. Just stand up and come before God. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I stretch forth my two hands to you, O God. This is the burden of your heart. There are these Solomons. There are these Timothys. There are these Rachels. These Deborahs. These ladies that your eyes are upon. And Satan wants to just confuse them. But we are coming out as, as for me. As for me, I don't know what others are saying about themselves, but as for me, I will follow the Lord. Father, put your hand on their lives. Step into their situation now. Let the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all unrighteousness, let it be poured upon them now. Lord, you said a new heart will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you. Give us that miracle. And from this meeting, oh God, let there be a miracle. Let there be a release of the supernatural. Let them experience a transformation from center to center. There are many centers, oh God, in Boko, and I'm hearing you say, as for you, as for you, tell you that, as for you. I have come to turn your life around. I have come to help your soul. You have gone so far, but I have not given up on you. As for you, just come out. Lord, I ask that as you are doing this, let there be a confirmation. Let there be a release of the power of God. Let there be a help that nobody could have given them. Thank you, Father. As you put your hand on your heart, I want you to just pray this prayer with me. And say, Lord, I have come. What you intend to do with my life, I surrender to you. Give me a new heart, a loyal heart, a willing mind. Give me the heart of Jesus. I have been dignifying for too long. I am be in between two opinions. But you have come to me to ask for you, as for you, and I heard you calling me by my name. I also declared, as for me, O oh God, I will follow you. As for me, O oh God, I will walk with you. I put my hand in your hand. Lord Jesus, take me to your bosom and begin your work in my heart. What you want to make me, I will become it by your hand. You will make me a voice for you and you will make me an answer to my generation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you will do so. So take your place in my heart and become the Lord of my life. My heart, my mind, my strength I pour you to walk with you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen.